It's spring, but the clouds haven't cleared. Fears of a trade war and geopolitical disruption are rising. We all know, including President Trump, that trade wars are lose-lose. Each party ends up in a weaker position. The US administration hopes to extract gains from sanctions without suffering much losses. So far, they have put more pressure on China, but the huge German current account surplus is also in the president's mind. Globally, trade wars tend to depress growth and create inflation, not a pretty picture for markets. However, early indications suggest that Europe and China, which have much to lose, are trying to avoid retaliation and escalation. There is a positive scenario out there where the US forces some opening up of Chinese markets and an increase in German military spending without any major escalation. We are more concerned just now about geopolitical developments. For instance, it looks increasingly likely that the US will withdraw from the iron nuclear deal. Heavy news flow there is likely to cause some volatility. Oil prices for now are the winner, and this vindicates our long inflation recommendation. At the economic level, the growth inflation mix remains strong, but is deteriorating. Global growth remains solid, but the regional rebalancing and the US fiscal stimulus create new fragilities. The US fiscal impulse will boost growth. Such a fiscal expansion, just when the global output gap is vanishing, marks a complete reversal of the forces that, with the help of central banks, push bond yields to record lows. Another troubling fact is the complete breakdown between rates and currencies. Currency moves tend to be a force of synchronization between central banks. If the dollar had strengthened as US rates rose on a relative basis, the Fed would likely be more cautious. All else equal, the ECB, the BOJ would normalize policy faster. Instead, the continued weakening of the US dollar is widening the gap between the Fed and other central banks. Eventually, this will likely translate into higher FX volatility. The pickup in US inflation, the fiscal stimulus, and ongoing dollar weakness all support the idea of a tougher Fed. There is an intimate link between the Fed and the financial cycle. As the Fed gets more restrictive, rates and equity volatility will rise. Importantly, a tougher Fed also supports a rise in stock bond correlation. All this should lead to de-risking and deleveraging, keeping us rather defensive in our tactical allocation recommendations. In all, we continue to look for a rise in bond yields, and more so if 10-year Treasury yields break out of the old descending canal. Not least important is the rise in global capital expenditure, which alters the balance between the supply and demand for savings and should feed the rise in bond yields. Higher capex also translates into higher productivity and higher real yields. We keep a positive 12 months view on equities, especially in Europe, but the rise in volatility, the tougher Fed, and the geopolitical news flow may cause further retracement in the near term. We keep our overweight to minimal and stick to defensive strategies as we expect better entry levels in spring. We still like Euro investment grade credits. 
given the ongoing support from the ECB and negative spread correlation with bond yields. But we will lighten up exposure in H2 as we get closer to the end of ECB buying. And we will switch from non-financials to financials. Risks in higher credits are too heavily skewed. We tactically overweight cash and cover bonds. Thank you and speak to you soon.